Hi everyone and welcome back. We're going to begin this painting using sap green and a large blending brush. So taking your brush you're going to stipple all around the sides of the canvas. So from here we'll build up all the foliage and begin adding the layers of the rings inside. You can do three or four of those depending on how narrow you want them to be. Just remember to leave enough of a white area in the very center for the sun. Then taking a small mop brush and light green, tapping only the bottom of the brush in between and slightly over top of the sap green. So the idea is to paint this dark to light in the center gradually. It's going to get lighter and lighter until we have a very soft glow from the sun in the very middle. This helps to create a focal point and to draw our eyes into the center of the canvas. So continuing to tap in a little bit more with that mop brush and some green. We'll build up a little bit more foliage and then wash our brush out very well. Taking a filter brush now. Any size will work. It's whatever you feel comfortable with using. And I'm using Neon Yellow by Holbein. We just need a small amount of this. A little goes a long way. And we'll also need some Titanium White. Now let's take yellow and the white and gently blend the two together. This will help keep the yellow a very soft tone once it dries. Now we'll begin applying it to the lightest part of the green closest to the center and then working our way out to the dark. and lightly pulling and dragging for the tree trunks and I'm just carefully pulling and dragging and then twisting over almost wrapping it around to create that um, sort of a braided twisted look for the trees just helps to add some more whimsy to the painting Okay, now a soft circle, leaving it blank right in the center, and then I'm picking up just straight neon yellow now, and I'm going to add little bits of that in and around all those tree trunks and those rings. 
Now once it dries, it's not really going to look this bright yellow anymore. It's going to um, look a little bit darker and just be like another shade of green. If you want it to stay looking yellow, then you would tint it a little bit with white. Now washing my brush out, I'm going to go switch to my little mini fan brush. And this is just so that we can get some different looking foliage and changing it just to change it up a little bit. Tapping lightly. I'm not using the full width of the brush for this. I'm using just the very tip, pulling and sliding and twisting over again for that braided look. And then I'm adding more highlights down in the bottom middle area where the sun rays are going to be coming out of and, and really catching all the light on those leaves. Maybe they're moss covered stones, that little pathway there. Now you can even create ferns with this fan brush if you want. Now I'm just testing it out and seeing if I like the way this looks here. Now it's a bit too bright. I'm going to come over with some blue and some sap green after. Because I want those areas to stay really dark. I'll begin tapping in the corner and I know this is going to dry darker in a few hours it'll probably look two to three times darker than what it is right now So adding the phthalo blue to the green um, changes the temperature. It becomes a cool green rather than a warm yellow green towards the center that we've got. And then I'm going to warm it up even more by adding um, some of the neon orange to the yellow later on. just by changing the temperature and the hue of your painting really can affect the mood of it and the feeling you want to to have when you're creating a piece and it's something to think about I don't think we really think about that too often when we're painting but color really is energy and can invoke a feeling And I talk about this in some of my other videos. Having a color chart or a color wheel is really important. If you're not really familiar with colors that work well together and that are complementary, um, it's a nice thing to have next to you when you're having a hard time choosing what colors to pick. You can just look at it and you'll see one color and then all you have to do is look across from it and it'll show you the color that goes with it and that will look nice. So using a liner brush and the neon yellow and white, I'm just coming in with a few little lines and squiggles uh, for my highlights. Nothing too, too fancy. It's all about building up the light and shadow. And then subtle uh, mid-tones in between. Back to our filbert brush. Titanium white right in the middle. Now, make sure there's no green on your brush. We're going to take some of the neon orange from Holbein and a little bit of titanium white.
keep in mind it's going to dry darker so uh, make sure you have more white on your brush than the orange. Let's take some more of the neon yellow. Bring that around partially over the green and partially over some of that orange. And then tap lightly to create an indication of some moss growing up some of those tree trunks. And then you can soften and scumble a little bit too. And I'm just using those same three colors, yellow, white, and light green. I'm going to continue to build up the foliage until I achieve the, the feeling that I want. And then we'll start working on those lanterns that will add a bit of magic to this painting. A bit of whimsy. I always like to add a little bit of whimsy to my paintings wherever I can. Let's take a little bit of that phthalo blue now. Mix it in with everything else on our brush and add a little bit more of a shadow right in here. A little bit more of a highlight. Okay, so let's wash that brush out now. Get some more of the blue, just straight blue this time. Do the same thing to the other side. Now sap green and right in here let's add straight sap green using the very tip of your filbert brush. begin painting the vines for the hanging lanterns. Um, you can put them wherever you like and I think I'm gonna do maybe four to five but I think I'm only gonna have three, yeah probably three lanterns for this. too much shadow in the center like I said before I want to keep that nice and soft now I'm gonna dry this off quickly with a hair dryer and after a few minutes of that I take a little liner brush any liner brush you feel comfortable will work um, you can use Mars black for this but I have enough sap green and orange on my palette to make a nice dark dark color that works well for this so I'm just doing sort of an egg shape for the lantern and then a few little dabs and little lines on the top and the bottom. And then that kind of twisted, ropey, braided effect I did on the tree trunks, I'm doing the same um, for the hanging chains on these lanterns.
okay now using my liner brush again and back to light green and white or yellow and white I'm gonna twist over and add a highlight on these vines Okay, wash all that green and yellow out of your brush. We're gonna take white with a little bit of orange, a neon orange, and create kind of a peachy color. Carefully paint inside of the lanterns. Make sure your black is all dry for this. We'll dry this layer off. Come in with some more white. Add a few more highlights to those rings or tree trunks. Now a little bit more of the orange, the white, and even a bit of yellow if you want to the top and the bottom of each lantern. And then titanium white right in the middle. And then a little bit more color around the sides. This helps to give them a really warm glow Back to a filbert brush, yellow and white. Just soften those rings a little bit around the sun. And then white right in the middle. Now using a small flat brush, white, a little bit of orange and yellow. Line it up diagonally from the sun and pull and flick. We'll do two or three of these. Whoops, I just got a little bit of that green on there, but that's okay. Easily get rid of that by using a little bit of water and just wiping it off so you really want your paint to be see-through transparent for this if you accidentally put too much white on it's very easy to take some of it off using a damp brush and lightly scrubbing or scumbling
So with my flat brush, I'm taking phthalo blue and sap green on the very, very tip of my brush. Make sure your brush is really flat and the bristles are tightly together for this. You're gonna do a little skinnier line on the top of those lanterns and I'm kind of making the ends of them flip up a little bit just to give it a bit more character. Um, and this is optional, I mean, you don't have to do that if you want, I just like that look. And then I'm going to very carefully do a few little lines inside each of them. We're going to go back to our mini fan brush, white, yellow, and orange. some of that color right below that dark line now I chose this brush to do this because it will look a little bit fuzzier it just gives it more of that glowy effect a few more highlights here and there. Okay, I'm just adding the last bit of detail here and I'm going to call this one done. Thanks again for joining me today and subscribing to my channel. Stay tuned for upcoming videos and a studio tour of my brand new art gallery. Happy painting everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye!